Hello class, this is section 3.3 .3, and we are going to work through a simple example where the characteristic polynomial has distinct real roots. So this will be our equation. No notice that it is a homogeneous equation and that our coefficients are constant. You don't see any x values lying, um, any x values anywhere. So let's make our substitution y equals erx and this lets us change this to a characteristic polynomial. By the way, please let me know if you still don't understand this step. This is uh, something that we covered in the previous chapter, chapter 2, I believe. But if you don't understand this, please let me know in class. But anyway, this corresponds to r cubed minus 4r equals 0. And this is our characteristic polynomial. So normally cubic equations, equations of degree 3, are really hard to solve. But in this case, we have a really nice factorization available. We can factor out the r to get this. And this is a difference of two squares, so we can factor again. At this point, you can use the quadratic formula too if you want to. But anyway, we have uh, r, and clearly r must equal to 0, plus 2, or minus 2. Those are the only possibilities to make this expression 0. These are our three roots, and we then can write y equals c1e0x plus c2 e2x plus c3 e minus 2x. In other words, c1 plus c2 e2x plus c3 e minus 2x. And this is going to be our general solution. So suppose instead that we have some initial values. So let me just write that sum down. Now notice that we need three pieces of information here to have a proper initial value problem, since this is a third order polynomial, a third order differential equation. So these are our initial value prop conditions. And let's see what we can do with them. So the first one says that when x equals 0, y equals 2. So we can just plug that in this equation c1 plus c2 e to the 0 plus c3 e to the 0. And we have just 2, 1 equals c1 plus c2 plus c3. That's our first equation involving the c's. So let's see how we can use our second equation. It's now information about the derivative of y. So derivative of y is equal to 6 when x equals 0. So let's just take the general solution and differentiate it. So differentiating both sides, the so c1 becomes 0. The c2 becomes c2 times 2 times e2x plus c3 times minus 2 times e minus 2x. Okay, and this the second equation tells us that when y prime is 6, x equals 0. So we can plug that in. 6 equals 0 plus c2, 2, e to the 0, plus c3, minus 2, e to the 0. And this just is 6 equals 2, c2, minus 2, c3. And that is the second of our equations involving c1, c2, and c3. Our third piece of information deals with the second derivative. So we need to take the derivative of this equation to get y double prime, that's this 0. So we have 
2e uh, c2 4e2x plus c3 4e minus 2x since minus 2 multiplied by minus 2 is equal to 4. And our third piece of information tells us that when y double prime is 4, x equals 0. And we have just this 4 equals c2 times 4 e to 0, 0 plus c3 4. e to the 0 is 0 again. And these are going to be our three equations involving c1, c2, and c3. Naturally, if we have three equations and three unknowns, we should be able to solve for a, b, and c. And let's give that a try. So first, if we have that 2 times the second equation plus the th third equation is going to imply that 16 is going to be equal to 8c2 minus 4c3 plus 4c3 and these two cancel out and this just tells us that c2 is equal to 2 so now we can use the third equation well, let's do a second that is slightly easier I think and this tells us that 6 equals to 2 times 2 minus 2 times c3 and this is only possible when c3 is equal to minus 1. Okay, so this is the first bit of information, the second bit of information. So finally we can use the first equation to tell us, let's go back to what the first equation says, 2 equals c1 plus c2 plus c3 so 2 is equal to c1 plus 2 plus minus 1 and this is this will imply that c1 is equal to 1 and th these are the solutions to our specific problem and we have to plug them in the general solution over here so our specific solution is just going to be y equals 1 times e to the 0, which is just going to be 1, plus c2 is 2, it's e to the 2x, plus c3 is minus 1, times e to the minus 2x, and that's just uh, plugging in our general solution over here. And this will be our specific solution. And that solves our initial value problem.